Hey, good evening, everyone. It is Sunday, March the 29th, 2020. Hope that you guys are having a great Sunday. Um, our family kind of taking it pretty easy today. Everyone slept in except Shay. She never sleeps in, really, till like, you know, 7.45 or whatever. But um, the rest of us slept in, and I made breakfast for Shay and I. The boys didn't wake up until later. And then we watched our sermon from church and talked for a little while, prayed together. Watched, uh, we met with our small group on Zoom, which was a blessing, so... Um, let me kick this thing to my other page real quick, and then we'll get started with uh, reading for tonight. We're at chapter 3 and chapter 4 of The Biggest Story. So, we're looking forward to it. Hope that you are as well. I know if you're in Lubbock, we just got the news about a state shelter in place from the mayor. I trust the mayor. Trust all of our leaders. we got to make sure we take care of each other and get ahead of this deal. All right. So, remember, we're reading the biggest story. Uh, it's by Kevin D. Young. I'm sure you could get it on Amazon or um, something like that if you're interested in it. It's, it's a great book. Um, remember that there's 66 books of the Bible, and I think there's 10 chapters of this book. We're not going to do all 10 chapters tonight. We're just doing two chapters, chapter 3 and chapter 4. And, um, yeah, so there's parts of the Bible that are left out of this book. Obviously, if we tried to do all 66 books in one sitting, then it might take us a while. But... All the stories, they pulled big stories out, and so we're going to hit those tonight. So, let's get started. Not too long after the whole tower business, God called a man named Abraham to leave his home and go to a new country. Actually, his name was Abram at this point, but everyone remembers him as Abraham. When God called Abraham, he made a lot of big promises. He promised to bless Abraham and to bless everyone who blessed Abraham. He promised to curse everyone who cursed Abraham. He promised Abraham a land and a child. God promised that Abraham would be the father of a great nation and that all nations would be blessed through him. Pretty much all the blessing that God wanted to give Adam and Eve, he promised to Abraham. And the best part this time... God was going to do everything himself to make sure Abraham got his blessings. You might think that God wanted to bless Abraham because he was such a swell guy, but Abraham didn't know God at all when God called him. And even after he got the call and all these promises, Abraham could still be a liar and a bit of a scaredy cat. Abraham's life had a lot of ups and downs. But he had two things going for him. The only two things, it turns out, that really matter. God's promise to bless him and Abraham's belief in God's promise. That's all Abraham had, which was a good deal because it was all needed. At times, it looked as if God wasn't going to keep his promises to Abraham for one thing, it was about a hundred years before Abraham and his wife Sarah, who used to be called Sarai, had a baby named Isaac, who thankfully was also called Isaac. And then, when the baby grew into a boy, God told Abraham to kill him. That must have seemed like a not-so-funny way to make a great nation out of Abraham, but Abraham listened to God in any way, and at the last second... God gave Abraham a ram to sacrifice instead of his beloved son. It was God's way of saying, I'll take care of the rescuing, just trust me. Eventually, Isaac grew up, got married, and had some kids of his own. Twins, to be exact, Esau and Jacob. God picked Jacob to get the blessing, even though he was the younger brother and wasn't supposed to get the blessing. But God is God, 
so he gets to pick. Jacob had 12 sons, and this time it was the fourth son, Judah, who wound up with the best blessing. Jacob told Judah that a lion of a leader would come from his family. Ooh. Great blessings, but not so great people. Isaac was sort of a weakling. Jacob was a selfish trickster, and Judah did such dumb stuff. We don't even want to talk about it. And yet, again and again, God kept his promises all the time. He blessed a whole lot of them to spot themselves. Maybe the snake crusher would still come from the gnarled branches of the Abraham, Isaac, Jacob family tree. Chapter 4 Several hundred years after God's promise to Abraham, it looked like things had gotten way off track. When God told Abraham to leave his home, he promised to give him a new land in Canaan. It was going to be a great land. It was supposed to remind God's people of the garden they once had. It would be sweet and refreshing with plenty of milk and honey. But Abraham and his sons never really possessed the land they were promised. And now it was 400 years later and they were slaves in Egypt. How Abraham's family got to Egypt's a long story, but here's the short version. They went to Egypt because there, there was a famine in Canaan. And when they got to Egypt, Jacob's son found their long lost brother Joseph who helped them with food and a place to live, even though he was there because his ten older brothers had been jealous and sold him into slavery after they almost killed him because of his fancy coat. Y'all may remember that story of the coat of many colors. I told you it was a long story. Well, delivering them from famine was one thing. That's when Israel's family was still pretty small. Israel, by the way, was Jacob's new name. I guess everyone needed two names back then. But hundreds of years later, the family was huge. How would God save a couple million people from slavery? It's not like he could just turn the Nile River into blood and send frogs and gnats and flies and disease and boils and hail and locusts and darkness and death until the king of Egypt let them go. Actually... That's exactly what God did. God raised up Moses to deliver his people, but in reality, God did all the work. He sent the plagues. He led the people with fire and cloud. He made the sea turn to dry land so the Israelites could walk through, and he turned the dry land back to sea when the Egyptians tried to cross over. It seemed that no matter what the Israelites did or what everyone else did to them, God always found a way to save his people. Chapter 5 will be next Sunday. Man, I don't know about you guys, but when I read that story, it sounds so crazy. God made all these promises and he kept all of them. In our sermon today with church, one of the things that our pastor talked about is there's like 8,000 promises in the Bible and all of them have been kept. All the promises God ever promised us have been kept. You know, it's kind of crazy too that we talked about Egypt and y'all probably know the story of Moses, right? Moses was born into Egypt. Uh, he got out of there after some trouble that he had. Um, his mom basically put him in a river, sent him down the river. One of the servant girls found her, took it to Pharaoh's daughter. She's like, I want that baby. Long story, grows up, ends up killing one of the slaves, gets nervous. Paya's out of there, runs like crazy to get out. Time goes by. Moses meets, uh, walking through the hills one time, sees a burning bush that's on fire, but it's not being consumed. I mean, can y'all imagine what that would be like? Y'all have seen fire before. You've probably seen things burn down, maybe a campfire or... Unfortunately, maybe a, a house on fire that burned. All of those things get consumed by fire. But this bush wasn't being consumed. And God told Moses, go back to Egypt and rescue my people. So he went. And I'm sure it could be kind of crazy because 
I mean, everybody knew who he was. They knew what he had done. Long story short, Pharaoh's not letting the people go. He's got too many workhorses to let them all just leave right now. He's building pyramids and who knows what else. And God sends all of these plagues, right? Sends these diseases. Now, I'm not going to be as far-fetched to say that God sent coronavirus to get our attention. But I don't know. I'm not going to say he didn't do it. He definitely has allowed it to happen. Um, is it part of his plan? I would say it is, right? Nobody wants to sign up and say, ooh, pick me for that task. But God's bigger than that. I think God is going to protect his people. I think he's doing that now. Um, but he's not going to let us be foolish. Like he, there's things that people are telling us what to do. I think God's given men and women a lot of wisdom in dealing with this. And they're instructing us on things that we should and should not do. Right? You all know by now, wash our hands, stay six feet apart, no gatherings. Today, the mayor said no gatherings other than your family. Right? Some of y'all are like, my family? Good grief. Please don't do that. But that's the way it's going to be for at least a week right now in Lubbock. It's been like that in other places already for two or more weeks. So it's where we are. But here's what I want to I want to let you guys know. I want to let you know of another promise from God, all right? is that God promises to take care of his people, and he's going to do that. What that looks like, I don't know, right? I don't know about you, but I'm praying every day that COVID-19 just is gone, would be completely gone. And some would say that's just not scientific. There's no way that could happen. You know what? I've seen a lot of science that's been debunked, proven wrong, right? I've also seen a lot of science that proves God is who he says he is, and as I read through scripture and I see things that God put into motion and then I see scientists go and say, yep, that's it. That's exactly right. We don't know why it does that, but that's how it is. So those are really cool things. Um, and so tonight, guys, I don't know where you're at. I know probably you're maybe at home or at someone's house or somewhere. And I don't know if you're excited or nervous or anxious. I just want to tell you that whatever's going on, God's got this. Remember we talked about it the other night. Whenever we get nervous, all we need to say to ourselves and remind ourselves is, God's got this. You want to say it with me? One, two, three. God's got this. And just believe it. And know that God is in love with you. There's a verse in the Gospels that talks about God providing for the birds of the field, right? You see all these birds out here? I got Sometimes if I leave my garage open, they, the birds fly in and eat the dog food. Even that's one of the ways God's taking care of the birds, the, my garage and the dog food, right? So, if God's going to take care of all the birds of the field, he's going to take care of you. You, people watching this, your parents, kids, everybody. So, I know that things are crazy right now, but we get to decide our outlook. We get to decide how we're going to respond to it. Some days are going to be better than others, right? Right. Some days we're going to be like, all right, we can do this. And some days we're going to be like, ah, the sky is falling. What are we going to do? Help. Right. And I want you to know on those days, call me. Call Coach Poe. Send me a message on Facebook or something. Let's talk. You're not alone in this. We are not alone in this. All right. God didn't put us down here just to be solo. He put us here for community. And so I hope that you guys know that no matter what, if you get nervous or scared or freaked out and you don't know what to do, call me. Message me. I'll give you my phone number. I'll give you my phone number right now. I don't care. 325-212-9609. Got it? No prank calls, no Tuttle. Better not be hearing get a call for bend over or anything like that. Got it? 325-212-9609. Let's FaceTime. Let's laugh together. Let's have fun together. Right? And even you guys, y'all need to call some people and say, just tell them you care about them, that you're checking up on them, that you love them. We can't be in the same houses together for a little while in Lubbock. And some of you have experienced this already. But that doesn't mean that we cannot interact with one another. That doesn't mean that we can't FaceTime or Zoom call. I mean, God's given us so much technology now that we can 
interact with each other, right? So let's do it. Let's use it. We're going to keep using it 8 o'clock every night, seven days a week. Lord willing, right? So I hope that you guys are having uh, a good Sunday. I hope that you enjoyed the story. I hope that you talk about it with your parents, with your families. I mean, remember after the tower fell, God put some things into motion, uh, keeps trying to bless his people. Even as bad as they might be sometimes, he continues to bless them. I'm one of those people. You're one of those people. Even when we do things we shouldn't do, God continues to bless us. He provides for us. And he'll keep doing it because he's a huge God, really big, right? And he loves us and he cares for us. So I love you guys. I hope that you're doing well. Things are going to look different over the next couple of weeks, maybe more. And here's the deal. I know that this sounds like a stretch, but if the worst thing that happens to us is that we have to stay in our houses and spend time with our families and watch Star Wars over and over, or find a new show to binge watch on Netflix, or read a book. <sighs> Crazy. You're going to do your schoolwork at home. Some of you, my boys, Jude and Jonah, they've been doing schoolwork at home for a while, so it's not different for them. But I can tell you this, if that's the worst thing that happens to us, boys and girls, moms and dads, we're going to be all right. We are going to be just fine. Because there's plenty of people who wish all they had to worry about was which show they're going to binge watch on Netflix. Right? All right. So, we're going to pray. Remember, we're praying for all the first responders. We're praying for all the doctors. We're praying for all the people that are putting themselves in harm's way so we can have somewhat of a normalcy going on. Um, my brother-in-law and his wife in... Kentucky, one of their friends, has been really sick. They're in ICU, not doing very good, and we're going to pray for them. So if you think of anything else we need to pray about, message it to me. We'll add it to the list for tomorrow night. Man, we also need to pray for business owners, small business owners, big business owners. This has got to be awful for them. They love their employees, and the way that they support their businesses is money. People coming in, and they're not having many people come in right now. So I know that God's going to provide. I'm praying that he will. Hopefully you'll join me in praying for that, and we'll keep trusting God to do what he said he was going to do. Keep providing. Keep fulfilling his promises. All right? Let's pray together, and we'll say good night, and I'll see you guys tomorrow night, okay? Lord, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for all my friends and families that are watching again tonight. Lord, we thank you that the biggest story ever told is the story that you've written, that it's full of 8,000 promises that you've kept. God, you've never broken your promise to us. So Lord, even during these scary times, I pray that we would remember that the promises that you've made for us are still true today. God, that you're still in love with us and that you promise to provide for us. I pray, Lord, that we would be a people who are seeking your face daily, who are seeking your will, that are walking according to your word, to your truth. Lord, I pray for all of our doctors and first responders again, that you'd continue to give them wisdom. Lord, would you continue to give them good health? Would you keep them well as they uh, continue to care for the people who are getting sick, those who are getting sick with COVID and uh, other viruses, those who get sick with the flu or strep throat or cancer Whatever it might be, God, we know that you've gifted those people for such a time as this. And it's time, and God, so I pray that you'd bless them and keep them well and keep them safe. Lord, we pray for uh, Tracy, I think is her name, Ryan and Sarah's friend. Lord, that you would just get her well. God, that you would uh, heal her body, give her strength, give the doctors wisdom on how to treat her. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd be with our mayor and all of our city council, uh, our city manager, as they navigate what it looks like to keep running this city. Lord, I pray for all of the cities in, in our state, in our nation, in the world. Um, and God, that you would just shine light, that you would provide in ways that we can't begin to understand. Lord, I pray for all of our uh, first responders that are first on the scene. Lord, that you would use them in mighty ways there. Father, we pray for all of our small business owners that are trying to navigate life right now and run a business and 
keep their people employed on very limited funds. God, I pray that you continue to make a way. Lord, I pray for our Congress and I pray for our president and all of the people that are advising him, Lord, that they would be filled with truth and not fear, facts over fear. And Lord, that that would be true for us. Would we not fall into the fears of this world, but we would trust the facts, the truth as your word tells us to believe on whatever is true. So Lord, continue to help us do that. We thank you so much for our time together. We thank you for this night. We thank you for all that you're doing. Lord, would you be with us? Would you give us a peace that passes all understanding? Would we be peacemakers? God, would we speak peace over our houses and our families and our friends and our neighborhoods? And God, more than anything, would we love others as you love us? God, would we demonstrate our love for one another as you've demonstrated your love for us? We thank you so much for the greatest display of love ever and Jesus dying on a cross for our sins. Lord, we didn't deserve it, but you blessed us with it anyway. And God, would you continue to remind us how much you love us? We thank you so much for our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen, guys. I hope that you have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow night.